I got a new toy. It is a Nano VNA, and this one's a version 2, which has more data points to it, and it's connected to one of these fine Baofeng UV5R antennas. And we're going to do some analysis on antennas with this, looking at the SWR across a broad frequency range, just like that curve that I have on here, because afterwards I'm going to show you how to put it in Excel where you can do analysis with it and save the data, which is really cool. So let's start with the software. I chose the Nano VNA Saver software. And here it is. The device is already connected on USB hub, but I just opened this software and it's it's got it remembers my settings from the last time I used it, but the device isn't connected yet. Here's the device right here. You can see it. It's on the bus, but you still have to say connect device. Presumably if you had three devices and you had to choose which one. And as soon as it connects, it instantly does a sweep. Now the next thing you do is set your range. And the range I like to use is 135 to 475 megahertz. And there's two reasons for that. One is because it covers the two meter band, 70 centimeter man band, and the GMRS bands, which I'm interested in. The other reason we'll see in a bit is it actually makes some of the data point density work out nice. So once you have that reset, you can hit sweep and you get a new curve. And you can see this antenna is not bad, right? You want an SWR of one. Um, a good SWR just means that the antenna is doing a good job or will do a good job when it's connected to a radio and transmitting of taking the power from the radio. You don't want that energy reflecting back into the radio. It could damage the radio and at the very least that's energy not coming out the antenna. And most new modern radios when they get a reflected energy back they lower the power, right? So you're going to be transmitting low power. A really good SWR of one doesn't necessarily mean the antenna is radiating power. It just means it's taking it from the uh, from the radio. So a good SWR is not a guarantee of good transmission, but a bad SWR is it means you're probably not doing very well. So here I have the bands already uh, highlighted in purple, the purple bars. You see this two meter band and the 70 centimeter band and then the two GMRS bands over here. And this is a pretty good antenna for all of them. Why don't we try another antenna? We're going to test Baofeng's quality control. Anyone want to guess how good their quality control is? Here's another one. Yes, I bought two of those radios. I'm sorry. Now we've got it connected. All we do is hit sweep again. This one's not so good on the two meter. You can see they kind of missed it on this particular antenna. Why don't we try another one? Why don't we see what about if you went over to Amazon and you upgraded to a 15 inch whip? This one's a Lucian, I think it's how it's pronounced, NA771. Let's test this one. And by the way, I'm holding this by the wire. I could, it doesn't matter if I touch the, the connector or not. But what I did find is if it's just laying on the counter, you get a really different curve. Matter of fact, we'll just do it and test it. So here's a Lucian. That's a pretty good antenna, I think. Let, let's test it. Let's just lay this down and sweep it, right? My hands aren't near it. It does change it. So now what? I'm going to hold it here. And now are we ready for Excel yet? Because that's what I like doing. I like analyzing this stuff. So this is a really broad spectral range. And normally you would only zoom in to just your band. But we're going to keep it broad, but we're going to add more data points. And the version 2 can do this. I don't know how well the version 1 does it. So under serial port control, you go to manage. And now over here under data points, it knows what device this is. Now I can do 1021 data points, which is pretty awesome. If I go back up here, now this span makes it so that the steps are exactly a third of a megahertz, which is kind of nice. That was my other motivation to having that range is because the steps come out nice. So now I'm going to hit sweep again, but it's going to take more time because of all those points. Part of the ah, and so I'm going to speed up this part of the video because it just takes so long. It takes forever. I don't know how many. What does it take? Maybe 10 seconds or something, 15 seconds. It's not fast, but it's cheap and it works. So who cares? Ah. There we've got it. Now you can see it's way more data points in this. That's going to allow us to zoom in a lot more later on. Let's get this into Excel. We've got to output a file and uh, uh, network analyzers, they have a standard format. So file 
It doesn't matter which of these two you choose. Uh, if you have more plots on the screen, there'll be more columns in this data. Uh, I always just use the first one because I only need the first two columns anyway. And I'm going to save it to my desktop. And uh, let's call it, uh, what is this, the NA771. OK. And this is a touchstone file, it's called. Save. So we're, we're kind of done with this. We'll leave it in the background. We're going to come back to it later. Let's go to Excel. And now we want to open that file. So if you looked at this file and you double clicked on it, your computer would say, I don't have anything to open this with. I don't know what this extension is. But from inside Excel, you could say, hey, I'm going to force you, Excel. I'm telling you to open it. So open. And I'm going to browse. Now, I already have this set to all files, but it's going to, by default, it's going to be all Excel files and you won't be able to find your file in here. So make sure you come over here and say all files, Excel. I want you to find all the files that are there. I want you to go to the desktop and there it is. And it says, okay, I see some data. Uh, what is it? Is it fixed with or delimited? You have to help me here. So, okay. It's a delimited file. And then you hit next. What kind of de delimiter is a thing that separates out the data? What is a delimiter? It's a space delimited. Watch when I click this, it separates out the columns for you. There's no commas or semicolons in this data, so it doesn't matter if these are clicked or not, but as long as space is clicked, you're okay. And now you can just finish it. So the data is here. Uh, for one, we've got to fix this. The headers are offset. All right, so I just slid those over. And there's nothing here, so I'm going to delete these guys. So this first column is, is in hertz. We're going to switch that to megahertz, just because I like to. So equals this divided by 1 with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros. Enter. And in Excel, oh, and there you see 135 megahertz. And in Excel, once your little cursor turns to that black plus, you could double click it, and it just auto fills down. Kind of nice. Now. I like to type megahertz right here, but I won't because it actually makes plotting more weird, and I'll show you that in a minute. What about these two columns? Where's our SWR? Well, from this right here, your S and your RI, you can actually make a whole bunch of stuff, but we're going to only make SWR with it, and we have to do a couple things to do that. This represents a complex number. It's, real, it's got real and imaginary parts, but all we care about is the amplitude, the absolute amplitude of the vector they make. So how do you get that? Square of the sum of the squares. So in Excel, you go equals SQR, oops, RT, type in one-handed here. And uh, I could lay this down. So we have to, that's a square root of this, squared, so that times itself, plus the other one times itself, All right? And there we go. That's the amplitude of the vector. It's not SWR yet. And again, I'll autofill that down. From this, though, we can get SWR. So how do we do that? Equals, parentheses, uh, one plus this new value we just made it, Made, made it, the new value we just made, divided by, parentheses, one minus that value. And that should be SWR. So fill it down, we'll say SWR. So in Excel, if I highlight this column for the x-axis, if you, if, as long as there's no header there, this works. And then you hit, hold control and just highlight this other column, both of them are lit up. Now you could just go to insert, scatter plot, and it looks absolutely nothing like what we want. Or does it? Maybe it does. Oh, yeah, because the scale is different. So if we look here, yeah, it's the same plot. So let's see if you can see that. So on, on here, it's just clipped, right? On, on the uh, nano saver, uh, nano VNA saver, the, the, the spike is just clipped. Here you can see it. Also, once we're here, so if you said, hey, I want to see a certain band, you just right click, format axis, and let's say, what do we want? Two meter band? So let's call, let's add a little bit more to it. Let's say the 142 to the 150 megahertz, 150. 
megahertz. And we could zoom our scale there to something like five. There you go. There's the two meter band. And so all there's so much data there at a third of megahertz per data point. Once you've got the whole curve like this, you could zoom into whatever band you want. It makes it really nice. So now you've got the data in Excel. You can overlap different uh, antennas and do cool stuff like this. And if you're going to tune your antenna, you can actually watch it happen in VNA and then go to high resolution and save it for later. So I hope this really helps. I hope you have fun measuring SWR with your nano VNA saver.